Um, yesterday I indicated to you that the vehicle was pulled over on uh, Theater Drive. Um, we did confirm that the vehicle was in fact disabled and that's why it was pulled over there to the begin with and uh, it was not drivable. And so that kind of added to the story of, of how our deputy came upon uh, the suspect in this case. After the first shooting that occurred up at the cemetery, uh, indicated to you yesterday that the suspect fled back down through the vineyard, back down to Theater Drive to his vehicle. He did in fact return to his vehicle on the passenger side of the vehicle and attempted to uh, get into the vehicle. The vehicle was locked and that was when the second uh, shooting occurred at the vehicle. As he was trying to get in after he was shot, and the, dep uh, the deputies um, uh, subsequently determine the uh, table to my left, to your right, uh, are weapons that were seized from the vehicle. I believe uh, at least uh, three of them were loaded and chambered and, and ready to fire. The shorter uh, weapon right there was located in between uh, the uh, passenger and driver compartment uh, up front, easily accessible, and uh, at least two of the rifles were immediately in the back seat, easily accessible, and also loaded. The small, uh, the standing up, excuse me, uh, drum magazine was actually loaded in that rifle. All indications are that the suspect was trying to get to the vehicle and to get uh, a rifle out of the vehicle. He never made attempt that we know of to get into the uh, driver's side and the vehicle was in fact disabled. Yesterday uh, our press conference was delayed for a couple reasons. One, the uh, delay was because we we're looking to notify the next of kin of the deceased and second we we're in the process of serving a search warrant on his, at his residence. The photo to, to my right and it has a picture of, of uh, weapons I'm referring to the, the picture in the middle there. Um, that was seized uh, as a result of the search warrant yesterday. There was a um, reverse 911 call put out for that neighborhood to shelter in place. And I know there was some, some confusion as to what that was. That was not a result of the shooting because the shooting was over in a very short period of time. It was a result of concern for the residents in the adjacent, or adjacent to where the suspect was living and um, we wanted to make sure that they were safe because it was a very dangerous situation. We had no idea who was present uh, at the location when we went there. At the, also recovered at the search warrant, uh, or actually uh, uh, viewed and, and identified at the search warrant, was gun manufacturing equipment and gun parts. Yesterday I also indicated to you that the gang task force uh, had been uh, working um, a case against the suspect and the case was in fact about illegal gun manufacturing. Many of the weapons you see, well, I'll say this, first all the weapons you see in the ammunition were illegal for the suspect to possess because he was a convicted felon so nothing that he owned or had in his possession was legal. Of the weapons up up here were um, uh, that were seized out of the vehicle they um, were still doing workups on those but um, very likely um, some of them were manufactured or the lower portion of those weapons were manufactured um, by the suspect in this case. So I want to get to suspect uh, identification. The suspect, as you can see up to my right, is identified as Christopher Michael Straub. He's 38 years old. Um, Straub had a significant criminal history. Uh, many charges uh, were dismissed or mitigated in charges uh, or, um, excuse me, migrated into charges. And here's an example of some of the charges that Mr. Traub had been charged with. Carrying concealed dirk or dagger, possession of a controlled substance, willful cruelty to a child with conditions to possibly cause great bodily injury or death, um, convicted of a felon in possession of a firearm, possession of illegal weapons, multiple parole violations between 2014 and 2015, conspiracy to commit residential burglary, grand theft, and elder abuse. 
He was uh, currently on or currently wanted for a uh, felony evading a peace officer warrant uh, out of the city of Paso Robles by the Paso Robles Police Department. Give you an idea of uh, kind of sum up some of his past. Um, Straub had been booked in San Luis Obispo County Jail uh, six times, been booked in Orange County Jail 14 times, LA County Jail six times, and Santa Clara County, County Jail uh, two times for a total of approximately 28 bookings um, in, uh, in his past. He is also, uh, he, had, he had also served two separate uh, terms in state prison um, and was uh, obviously continuing uh, what his behavior had been. I want to uh, discuss the deputy that had been shot. Um, you can see his picture up there. Uh, deputy Ted Linhoff began his uh, career with San Luis Sheriff's Office in April of 2008 where he was hired as a correctional deputy. He worked <clears throat> in that role until May of 2013 where he separated from the county and went to work for the county of Riverside where they put him through uh, law enforcement academy uh, and ultimately assigned him to uh, the Indio Courthouse down in that uh, the county of Riverside. In January of 2015, uh, Deputy Linhoff returned to San Luis County where he became a patrol deputy and, um, and remained that to, uh, to his current status. In May of 17, he was appointed to our uh, bicycle patrol team. Uh, he was most recently assigned to our South Station, but has also worked as a court bailiff. And then most recently in January, he was assigned to the North Station. Just to mention uh, a little bit about his, his status, uh, he remains in the hospital uh, in stable condition. Uh, he underwent surgery yesterday for his injuries sustained from uh, being shot. Um, he's in good spirits and is receiving a lot of support from uh, the community and also from the department.